The narrative of human history is fundamentally tied to Africa. The earliest confirmed appearances of Homo sapiens traits are exemplified by the finds at Jebel Irhud in Morocco, dated to approximately 300,000 years before present. Subsequent finds, such as those at Omo and Herto in Ethiopia, confirm the widespread presence of early Homo sapiens across different regions of Africa by about 190,000 years before present. However, the most profound demographic event in our recent history, the colonization of the entire globe by modern humans, stems from an out-of-Africa expansion that occurred much later, roughly around 70,000 and 50,000 years before present. This single, successful demographic wave is the source of virtually all non-African ancestry today. This chronological gap of over 200,000 years between the emergence of anatomical features and their successful global dispersal presents a lag paradox. The key to understanding this expansion lies in recognizing the difference between early tentative dispersals and the main event. Early human dispersal attempts are recorded, possibly as early as 270,000 years before present. Fossil and archaeological evidence confirms that earlier groups of modern humans moved out of Africa, notably into the Levant, such as the remains at school in Kafse, dating to 100 to 20 to 100,000 years ago, and possibly from Jebel Faya in Arabia around 120,000 years ago. While these early groups demonstrated anatomical modernity and the physical capacity to leave the continent, genomic studies indicate that they contributed negligibly to the modern global gene pool. These early waves are typically described as ghost populations that either went extinct or retreated back into Africa when climate conditions changed. The fact that anatomical modernity alone was not sufficient for sustained global colonization underscores a crucial point. The successful expansion around 70,000 years ago was driven not merely by anatomy, but by the acquisition of unique behavioral, technological, and demographic resilience that the earlier lineages lacked. This later group reached a critical demographic mass, an ecological and cultural tipping point necessary for planetary survival. Mitochondrial DNA plays a central role in understanding ancient human population history because it is inherited only from mothers and therefore preserves a clear record of maternal lineages through time. Studies of mitochondrial DNA show that early human populations within Africa remained relatively stable between about 200,000 and 100,000 years ago, with no major booms or collapses, even as different groups lived in separate ecological zones. A major demographic change appears between roughly 80,000 and 70,000 years ago with the rise of haplogroup L3, a maternal lineage that underwent a rapid population expansion within Africa. This expansion aligns closely with archaeological evidence for increasing cultural and behavioral complexity among Middle Stone Age populations. At Blombos Cave, for example, researchers uncovered engraved ochre, shell beads, and finely made bifacial points dated to around 100,000 to 70,000 years ago, suggesting symbolic thought and advanced craftsmanship. Pinnacle Point, another key site, shows early use of coastal resources and heat treatment of stone, innovations associated with improved survival strategies. The Still Bay and Howison's port industries, known for finely crafted blades, heat-treated silkrete tools, and symbolic artifacts, further indicate that African populations were becoming more technologically sophisticated and socially organized. These cultural advances likely increased the caring capacity of environments and allowed certain populations including those bearing L3 lineages, to grow more quickly than before. The defining genetic characteristic of the out-of-Africa expansion is the continuous directional loss of genetic variation observed as one traces populations eastward away from Africa. This pattern is known as the serial founder effect. As the initial founder population spread across Eurasia, subgroups repeatedly split off to colonize new territories. Each split represented a small demographic bottleneck, reducing the genetic diversity inherited from the previous population. Consequently, genomes from contemporary African populations retain an exceptional number of unique variants and higher overall diversity, reflecting the long history of the species within the continent. The non-African populations, derived from a small subsample of the original African diversity, show a dramatic reduction in this variation. This pattern is not just visible in human genomes, it is also supported by the genetics of human parasites, morphology, and linguistics, creating a unified model of the global colonization event. 
The successful colonization of the world between 70 and 40,000 years ago was orchestrated by a synergy of environmental stresses that provided the motive, technological innovations that provided the means, and significant demographic factors. The prevailing assumption that human migration is primarily a search for better, more productive land is challenged by the paleoclimatic evidence surrounding the main out of Africa event. The successful dispersal occurred during marine isotope stage 4 and the transition into marine isotope stage 3, roughly 75,000 to 50,000 years ago. This was a global glacial period characterized by cold and, crucially, extremely dry conditions across northeast Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Rather than being lured out by lush, vegetated corridors, the data suggests that a massive shift toward aridity and environmental deterioration acted as a powerful push factor, compelling small groups to seek resources outside the shrinking habitable zones of Africa. This stress force movement, prioritizing survival over stability, Adding complexity to the climate narrative is the youngest Toba eruption, a super volcano event that occurred in Sumatra, Indonesia, approximately 74,000 years ago. The Toba catastrophe theory posits that the eruption caused a severe volcanic winter, plunging global temperatures and leading to a bottleneck that reduced the human population worldwide to as few as 3,000 to 10,000 individuals. While highly debated, the timing is relevant. The primary genetic dispersal out of Africa is dated shortly after Toba, between 70 and 60,000 years ago. Research in the Horn of Africa suggests that Middle Stone Age populations were stressed by the resulting environmental degradation, such as shrinking waterholes, but they demonstrated exceptional behavioral flexibility to survive. The Toba eruption may not have blocked the migration, but rather acted as an evolutionary filter. The harsh post-Toba world could have accelerated selection for the most resilient and innovative populations, creating a cohort ready for global expansion, potentially having cleared competition or forced the development of new survival techniques such as the use of the bow and arrow evidence around this time. The ability of these small founder groups to survive the environmental stresses and rapidly colonize diverse landscapes stemmed from an expanded ecological niche. Around 70,000 years ago, the human niche began to diversify, allowing populations to effectively utilize habitats ranging from dense forests to arid deserts. This flexibility implies advanced planning, social organization, and superior technology the true pull or enabling factors. The archeological record shows that these migrating Homo sapiens possess sophisticated middle paleolithic to early upper paleolithic toolkits. Key among these were microlithic tools, small, deliberately shaped stones that suggest the routine creation of complex composite weapons, such as hafted spears and projectile points. This advanced technology, coupled with enhanced cognitive capabilities like complex language and developed social networks, provided the logistical advantage needed to thrive in unfamiliar territories and potentially compete successfully against established archaic hominins. Logistically, the successful wave utilized the southern coastal route. During periods of lowered sea level, the Bab el Mandeb Strait at the mouth of the Red Sea narrowed, allowing modern humans to exit East Africa and rapidly migrate along the coastlines of the Arabian Peninsula and South Asia. This route likely functioned as a coastal superhighway, utilizing maritime resources, fish and shellfish, which provided a stable and predictable food source, compensating for the instability of dry inland resources. This logistical efficiency allowed the migrants to move with impressive speed, estimated at 0.7 kilometers per year, enabling them to bypass competitor hominins in the Levant and spread quickly toward Australasia. The most fascinating aspect of the out of Africa expansion is the precision with which population geneticists have quantified the size of the founding group. The popularized figure of 1000 ancestors is not a physical count of migrants, but an estimate of the effective population size, a critical concept in demographic modeling. The population boom within African populations contrasts with what the ancestors of present-day non-African populations were experiencing, as they show clear genetic signs of a severe population bottleneck during the out-of-Africa migration, which occurred between about 70,000 and 50,000 years ago. While African populations at this time retained deep genetic diversity and continued to expand, the small group that left Africa carried only a narrow subset of this variation. Genetic studies tracing this specific bottleneck event consistently estimate the effective founder size to be around 1,000 to 2,500 individuals.
This bottleneck, sometimes described as a genetic funnel, drastically reduced maternal lineages outside Africa. All mitochondrial haplogroups found today in Europe, Asia, Oceania, and the Americas trace back to a single L3-derived lineage. Meanwhile, within Africa, many older haplogroups such as L0, L1, and L2 survived and expanded, preserving the continent's deep genetic history. The contrast between African expansion and the non-African bottleneck explains why Africa today contains the most ancient and diverse maternal lineages, while the rest of the world reflects a younger, drastically reduced subset of that original diversity. To quantify this event, geneticists use the concept of effective population size, which is defined as the size of an idealized, theoretical population that would experience the same rate of loss of genetic diversity or genetic drift as the actual historical population is invariably much smaller than the census count, the actual number of people physically present because it accounts for real world factors like unequal reproductive success, fluctuations in population size, and unequal sex ratios. These precise estimates are derived primarily through the application of coalescence theory. This theoretical framework allows scientists to run time backward, tracing the ancestry of sample genes from contemporary humans until those lineages merge or coalesce into a single common ancestor. The fundamental principle governing this calculation is that the rate of coalescence is inversely proportional to the population size. In a large, stable population, genetic lineages take a long time to coalesce. Conversely, a severe reduction in population size, a bottleneck, causes lineages to merge rapidly. By analyzing the frequency and timing of coalescence events across different genetic loci in non-African populations, researchers can reconstruct the historical population trajectory. The dramatic spike in the coalescence rate that occurred roughly 70,000 to 50,000 years ago is the signature of the out of Africa bottleneck, allowing the effective size of that constricted population to be modeled and constrained. The convergence of estimates derived from multiple independent genetic markers provides powerful validation for the out of Africa bottlenecks scale and timing. For instance, the time to the most recent common ancestor for the non-African population is independently estimated at 52 to 60,000 years ago using mitochondrial DNA and 40 to 50,000 years ago using Y chromosome sequences. This consensus confirms that a single rapid demographic event created the global non-African population structure. If the effective population size was 1,000 to 1,500, the actual census count of physical individuals who left Africa must have been higher. In stable hunter-gatherer societies, the ratio of effective population to physical individuals for autosomal DNA is estimated to be approximately 0.6 to 0.7. Applying this ratio to the derived effective population size of 1,000 to 1,500 yields a demographic projection for the census population ranging between approximately 1,400 and 2,500 individuals. This calculation indicates that the expansion that defined modern global humanity likely originated from a population equivalent to 50 to 100 small hunter-gatherer bands, assuming an average band size of 25 individuals. This was an extraordinarily small and vulnerable cohort, and their small effective size accelerated the impact of genetic drift, drastically reducing rare variants and fixing certain traits, thereby establishing the limited genetic palette that subsequent global populations inherited. The successful expansion of Homo sapiens defined a new phase of global human history characterized by rapid geographic colonization and crucial interspecies interactions. As the founder populations migrated across Eurasia, they were not entering an ecological vacuum. They encountered established archaic hominins, most notably Neanderthals in the West and Denisovans in the East. Genomic studies have definitively proven that extensive interbreeding occurred shortly after humans left Africa. This genetic mixing was far from incidental. It was central to the adaptive success of the newcomers. Non-African populations today carry approximately 1-4% to of DNA inherited from Neanderthals. And specific populations, such as those in Melanesia and East Asia, carry 4-6% Denisovan DNA. Moving into the high latitude, colder, and pathogenically novel environments of Eurasia presented massive challenges. The incorporation of archaic genes provided a fast-track mechanism for adaptation, offering resistance to new diseases and environmental fitness traits that would have otherwise taken thousands of years to evolve. 
Certain genes related to immune response were inherited from Neanderthals and Denisovans, allowing the successful colonization of challenging non-African climates. This hybridization, therefore, was not a side note, but an essential force enabling the global emergence of modern humans. The expansion of Homo sapiens subsequently coincided with the disappearance of these archaic lineages. While the exact cause remains a subject of ongoing debate, the superior resource management, ecological flexibility, and potentially competitive pressure from the expanding modern human population contributed to the eventual extinction or demographic absorption of Neanderthals and Denisovans. The genetic model suggesting a single, rapid dispersal along a southern route is strongly corroborated by the archaeological timeline. Early evidence of the expansion is found across the Arabian Peninsula, which was accessible during periods of increased humidity, Green Arabia. Sites in Saudi Arabia yielding 88,000-year-old human finger bones confirm the use of this gateway. Moving eastward, sites in South Asia such as Jawalapuram in India feature stone tools dating back 74,000 years that show morphological correspondence with African tool assemblages of the same period. This archaeological continuity supports the trajectory of the coastal migration wave. The speed and logistical sophistication of this migration are best demonstrated by the ultimate milestone, the colonization of Sahul, the combined landmass of Australia and New Guinea. Evidence from Lake Mungo in Australia, including the ritually cremated remains of Mungo Lady and the burial of Mungo Man, dates the definitive settlement of the continent to 40,000 to 42,000 years ago. Achieving this colonization so rapidly after leaving Africa, with a dispersal rate estimated at 0.7 km per year, confirms the exceptional adaptive capacity and resource stability afforded by the southern coastal route. The necessity of maintaining constant forward momentum over such vast distances required reliable resource provisioning, which maritime exploitation successfully provided. The out-of-Africa expansion of Homo sapiens between 70,000 and 40,000 years ago stands as the pivotal demographic event in human history. This successful colonization, which birthed all non-African human populations, was a highly complex phenomenon driven by the severe push of climate deterioration, the cold, dry conditions of marine isotope stage 4-3 yet only enabled by the pull of superior behavioral and technological modernity and expanding ecological niche and composite tool use. The quantification of this exodus is a triumph of population genetics. The estimate of 1,000 ancestors is not a census count of physical individuals, but the effective population size, a precise measure of the genetic bottleneck severity derived from coalescence theory. This of 1,000 to 1,500 translates to a highly vulnerable census population of roughly 1,400 to 2,500 individuals who managed to survive, adapt, and colonize the vast expanse of the planet. The legacy of this small founding group is threefold. First, the establishment of the serial founder effect, which determines the limited genetic diversity of all subsequent non-African populations. Second, the logistical achievement of rapidly traversing the globe enabled by reliable coastal exploitation, and third, the critical incorporation of archaic hominin genes which provided essential genetic raw material for immune defense and environmental adaptation outside the African homeland. This small band of resilient migrants, numbering in the effective thousands, truly redrew the human story, demonstrating a level of adaptive capacity that ensured the species global dominion.